My name is Sarah Beeman. Welcome back to my improv vlog. In this video blog series, I've been explaining some different techniques that anyone can use to keep their thoughts clear and their mind organized during improvised belly dance performances. This week, we're going to be exploring um, changes in tempo and how to use them to create more interesting performances on the fly. In this exercise, we're going to explore changing the speed at which we do our movements. This is a great way to add a little bit of contrast and interest to your improvised performances. We're going to be alternating between using eighth time, quarter time, half time, full time, double time, and quadruple time. Now sometimes some dance instructors will use things like half time or double time to just mean this move done half as fast or this move done twice as fast. But in this video, what I'm going to mean when I say eighth time is you're going to do one move for every eight beats in the music. We're going to try to extend that move for eight whole counts. Quarter time is going to mean one move for every four beats in the music. Half time is going to mean one move for every two beats in the music. Full time is one move per beat. Double time is two moves per beat. And Quadruple time, I almost can't say it, quadruple time is four moves per beat, so it's really fast. By alternating between these speeds, we can make sure that we're keeping a nice, interesting composition, even though we're going to be using music that's kind of the same tempo all the way through. Let's take a look at what this strategy looks like in application. In this example, I'm going to stick with one tempo for a really, really long time. This was actually kind of tough for me to do, and I slip out of it here and there, but I'm going to try to stick with all eighth time for a good long time, and then all quarter time, and all half time, all full time, and so on, gradually increasing in speed, and then we're going to go back to eighth time for a little while. If I was really going to perform improv, though, I would probably change my tempo a little bit more frequently. Um, even within the same musical phrase sometimes. But let's take a look at what this more simplified example looks like. You can follow along with me trying to do similar moves to what I'm doing, or you can just use the structure for your own improv, even to your own music. Let's take a look. <laughs> Thank you.
you can use this strategy to give music that has kind of a flat character and tempo all the way through a little bit of structure so that your entire performance has a bit of climb in like excitement and intensity and then maybe a fall at the end. It's always nice to have that kind of peaks and valleys structure and of course you can have multiple peaks and valleys or you can just get really really fast and keep going and keep going all the way through until the music just stops. Whatever you would like to do. Um, sometimes you'll encounter songs that already have that kind of structure kind of baked in to the music. And in that case, I probably wouldn't superimpose my own chosen tempos and do eighth time moves when the music sounds really fast. Instead, I would listen to the tempos that are being emphasized in the song. Um, are we really hearing a lot of 16th notes, like 1e e and a 2e e and a 3e e and a 4e e and a... And if I was hearing that, I would probably do something fast, like a shimmy, um, instead of something slow, like a eight count snake arm as much as I like eight count snake arms. So um, just listen to your music and be intelligent about it when you're picking out tempos to use. Don't be afraid to dance really slowly sometimes. I think that sometimes we tend to think that faster dancing or more complicated dancing is inherently going to be more interesting. But if you're fast and frantic throughout your entire performance, it tends to exhaust your audience. It's always a nice kind of break for both you and your audience if you calm down and do a few eight count moves or some four count moves, um, hopefully when the music calls for it, um, or if you've got pretty flat music, whenever you feel like it. It's a really good way of adding some contrast and character to your improvised performances. All right, so I hope that this video helped demystify some musical concepts for you in such a way that you can start applying them right now, either to your practices at home or out in the wider world when you perform. Um, please feel free if you'd like to see uh, me cover a specific topic in the future related to improv to leave me a comment here or to send me a message or to send me an email. Thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoyed it.